the next few videos will be not from Moscow but from St. Petersburg, also known as the second capital of Russia and as the Russian Paris or however you call it. Anyway, it's a very beautiful historical city, really worth visiting in Russia. And we started our journey here in Petrograd, which is like 30 kilometers away from St. Petersburg, but it's the most known palace located in St. Petersburg. It belonged to Peter the Great. And my favorite fact about this place that I never skip a chance to mention is that if Petrograd was a separate country, it would have been the fifth smallest country in the world. So it's like 24 or something like that times bigger than Monaco and other tiny countries. And you can imagine how much time you need to explore everything in here. tricky to understand how everything is organized here so here is a quick instruction the park itself is open since 9 a.m. and the entry fee is 900 rubles or 20 New Zealand dollars uh, but it's only an entrance to the park where you can explore everything from the outside don't be late to see the epic fontaine show that starts here at 11 a.m. all those fontaines will be switched on at the same moment and it really looks amazing and it's a free adventure after enjoying those huge fontaines you'll definitely want to see the palace from the inside because it's huge it's beautiful and it's absolutely unbelievable so it is open since 12 p.m. and and it costs 1,000 rubles or 22 dollars, uh, 22 New Zealand dollars, something like that. Montplaisir Palace or Palace My Pleasure and uh, despite the fact that Peter the Great had all those huge rooms all to himself in the main palace he actually didn't love that place and he mostly lived in the tiny Montplaisir Palace that is also my favorite place to be honest because they have a beautiful garden in front of it and they always decorate it according to the season I hope there is something unusual and cool this time as well let's see St. Petersburg palaces, Petrogov was always my least favorite just because how overcrowded it is. It is definitely the most well-known site and the most visited one here, so you can't actually feel that aristocratic vibes in here just because there's so many tourists. But we are here really early today and now at this very moment I quite feel how the life here was in the previous centuries and how really epic this place is. Contains in Peterhof. It 
is actually quite an impressive fact because all the fontaines here they work without any pumps. It is actually a miracle how uh, all the fontaines here are operated because they use special reservoirs to collect the water. And from the upper garden that is located behind the palace uh, all the way to the lower garden where we are now, this water just flows by itself, uh, pushing itself out from the ground. And just because of the level difference, uh, the fountains that are here in the lower garden, they can rise up to 16 meters without any pumps. to share with you is that if you're staying in St. Petersburg and you want to see Petergaf, you can actually get here by boat. I, I never did it myself to be honest but people say it's quite amazing. It is an adventure itself and but a small warning it can be quite bumpy on the windy days which are quite common in St. Petersburg. Today we have a really really quiet tranquil day and I think it's a perfect opportunity to try a boat tour so just Look out for the weather and experiment with your transfer. We have found the place where to buy tickets for the boat. And if you want to go from Petergof back to St. Petersburg, it will cost you 850 rubles, which is approximately $20, just a little bit less than $20. And as far as I understood, they have a lot of different companies, but they all cost the same, so it's really easy to choose. It might seem that the architecture of this park is a bit chaotic. There is a building over here, over there and over there. But actually there are some certain rules in how everything should be organized. For example, once you start building a new house or palace or pavilion or whatever, you have to have a fontaine or a cascade of fontaines next to it. So when they started to build this beautiful tiny hermitage building behind my back, they obviously needed a new fontaine on the road to it and they decided to build this gorgeous, beautiful lion's cascade that has a lion sculpture around it. The little palace is nothing else but a guest house for the most respected guests of Peter the Great. And what I always found really, really funny is that right in front of it there is a pond, which is not just a beautiful pond to have a beautiful view out of your balcony. It was actually used to grow fish that would then be eaten during lunch or dinner of Peter the Great. So they used to grow fish here, and the fish was surprisingly clever. I don't know because. Uh, people who were in charge of those fishes, they had a special bell and when they rang that bell, the fish knew that it's time to eat and they were all coming over here and it was a feeding time. Okay guys, I hope 
hope you enjoyed today's historic walk around one of the most spectacular Russian palaces, if not the most spectacular Russian palace. We definitely enjoyed it despite being sunburned, uh, but it's, it's an amazing weather here in St. Petersburg. It, the views are epic as always. And thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you didn't do that yet. And we'll see each other soon. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.